Dr. Carl, thank you so much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you. We're at the STEM launch for TikTok uh, here in Australia. You're one of 500 uh, or so creators uh, in Australia, amongst 7,000 internationally. Ah. Uh, just in terms of your messaging on TikTok, you're obviously across many channels. Most Australians are very familiar with your work. And we'll touch on space as well. But just how you found the platform itself, TikTok, in terms of delivering your message uh, for science and STEM? Um, the good thing about TikTok is that I can reach a different audience and also learn stuff and also find out when I make a mistake and somebody corrects me on that. But also the most important thing is that we can put forward the message of science, which is, to quote Richard Feynman, that science is a way to not get fooled. Got it. Science is a way to understand what's really going on and then the decisions that you make can be better. One of the challenges within that short short form platform uh, is really condensing your message and making sure it's nice and succinct. As you say, uh, even correcting uh, some of the learnings that you've even had. How, how challenging do you find that that short form? Uh, and it's, it's gotten a little bit longer as well now, but yeah, just a, how much of a challenge to create the content uh, and to condense it in a uh, consumable way? It's really hard to condense some stuff down into a minute or less. So you might think, oh, I've got a relative and their little child has got whooping cough. Doctor, tell me about whooping cough and you've got 60 seconds. Got it. No, believe it or not, there are some things that take longer than 60 seconds. But what you can do is a series of videos looking at the topic from different angles and gradually build up the database of knowledge in the eyes and the brain of the viewer. Well, that brings us to our, our focus of Australia in Space and Australia's activities within an international uh, space domain. What are your general observations and, again, much content that you've produced uh, within space uh, to encourage uh, STEM uh, for space for kids? Um, I find all things in science interesting. So people say, what's your favourite <laughs> yes. area? And it's the last one that I read. So space is the yeah, favourite? Yeah, so space is a big one. Um, it's interesting how various media such as the Daily Mail will have a headline saying physics is broken and we don't know anything about the early universe because James Webb told us that everything we know is wrong and what they've done is a minor tweak or a bit of data but to turn it into a clickbait they say science is broken the internet is broken which I don't think is very helpful um, I am loving the fact that the JWST among other things can possibly find life and for me, that's the big one. So if you, every year, the astrobiologist, so astro means star, bios life, logos to light. So the people who are expert in the field of life, not on earth, every year they have a conference. At the end of it, they have a show of hands. First question, is there life, any sort of life, outside earth? And everybody puts their hand up. Like straight away, there's five places in our solar system, not on earth, where we have underground oceans of water, mm -hmm. liquid water. Mars, two of the moons of Jupiter, two of the moons of Saturn. And the second question is, is there intelligent life? And about half put their hand up and half don't. Well, I'm foolishly, because I damaged my brain by reading too much science fiction, <laughs> at the rate of one science fiction story a day from when I was about 12 to when I was 32, um, I tend to believe there's intelligent life out there. But at the moment, we've got nothing. But How the JWST, it is getting very close to be able to pick up certain signs of life, which is basically some sort of biochemical instability yeah. in the atmosphere of a planet that has to be driven by some sort of anti-entropic creature. How encouraging do you find uh, space at the moment, particularly low Earth orbit, uh, the new uh, iteration of the International Space Station has been built. Uh, the ISS will come down in 2030, uh, the Moon and the Mars missions with Artemis and the like. How encouraging do you find that now that uh, there's been a rejuvenation, I suppose, over the last decade or so within space uh, and what that well, means for, for science on Earth? Okay, just deal with one of them. With the International Space Station coming down, I think they should boost it to a higher orbit with electrics. Um, the trouble is that it requires a huge amount of energy to boost it as compared to de-orbit it and take it up to the thousand kilometre level and go through a very busy area where it could get hit by a lot of space junk. Mm -hmm. I still think it's a shame to just simply 
junket. What was the other example you mentioned? Uh, and the Artemis programs uh, for the Moon and Mars missions. Artemis, I'm curious about. It seems almost as though NASA might have gone down a futile pathway or not, we don't know at this stage. Part of the problem, unlike, for example, in China, uh, the funding in NASA is year to year. Whereas in China they say, we've got this 10-year goal, here's some money for 10 years. Yeah. And so they can have a decent goal. And so they, NASA never got the chance to develop the fully reusable spacecraft that they wanted. Instead, those engineers went over to SpaceX. Um, Elon Musk is not the god of knowledge. Uh, he's just a financier. Um, and then secondly, the um, space, the big stainless steel thing, Starship, it might make Artemis redundant or not, we don't know. It does have the advantage of being reusable. Here's a question, did you see it getting caught by the chopsticks when it landed? Yep. Isn't that bloody amazing? I'm glad you think so, yes. Oh my God. And <laughs> the reason that they had to go by for catching it via chopsticks rather than landing on a landing pad was that it would have increased the weight by too much and reduced the weight load, yep. the payload. So that I thought was a very brilliant thing. And I'm kind of thinking that Artemis is good, but it might be irrelevant in the big picture due to it being old technology and too expensive. I don't know. Well, then the last sort of, sort of question would be on Australia in space and any message there for both uh, kids uh, in, in Australia for their, their potential careers in space, but also generally the space community and the space industry. Uh, observations here that you might have uh, and any sort of messages uh, In a simple out? sentence, it sucks, comma, compared to New Zealand. Now, here's a question for the audience, for you. How many satellites has uh, Rocket Lab, the New Zealand company, put into space with rockets that they designed and built themselves? How many? Oh, I have no idea, but a lot. A couple of hundred? <laughs> yes. And they got, they're getting something heading for the moon? Yes. What have we got? So, we, we haven't put the money into it, and we should. Um, here's a little diversion for you. <clears throat> Over the last couple of weeks, there have been various press releases coming out of the Arab countries around the Mediterranean and so forth, Middle East. Overwhelmingly, they are pouring shirtloads of money into science and technology because they see it as a long-term investment that will pay off shirtloads of money, much more than you put in. For each dollar you put in, you get about 100 back, but not tomorrow. Yes. And they're going down that pathway. In Australia's case, we went down a different pathway, and the example was that in Sydney, there's a pedestrian overpass that leads to the showground on Anzac Parade, and it costs $35 million to build. In other words, just to get pedestrians from here to there, and they put it in the wrong place, so it didn't matter. But the, in that year, the amount of money that the Australian government gave to putting human Australia into more space-related activity was one-seventh of what they spent building an uh, overpass in the wrong place. We, we need to have better politicians in Australia. Dr Carl, on that note, we'll conclude. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we've been at the STEM launch for TikTok uh, on your channel. You'll be a contributor there uh, as well. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on Australia in Space TV uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, thank you very much.